The Perfect Date tells a story of a young man named Brooks Radigan, who has ambitions to change the world. He idolized visionaries like Steve Jobs and Elon Musk and wanted to be like them. He often expresses his desire to change the world while explaining the steps he will take to make the world a better place, including to his best friend, a young man named Murph. One day, his teacher asked Brooks why he was so ambitious to change the world. He said that this world does need to change to be better. Hearing Brooks' answer, his teacher seemed dissatisfied and asked him to improve his essay by knowing and exploring himself better. Brooks, who desires to attend Yale University, works part-time at a fast food restaurant with Murph. He told Murph about his essay, which their teacher thought was not good and should be improved. Not long after, one of Brooks' classmates, Reese, came to the restaurant with his friend. Brooks heard Reese tell his friends that he was reluctant to accompany his cousin to the dance, but his uncle kept pushing him and promised to give him some money. Brooks then offered to take and accompany Reese's cousin to the dance, as long as Reese was willing to lend him his luxury car. Hearing this, Reese agreed because he didn't want to accompany his cousin. That night, Brooks, who drives Reese's luxury car, calls Murph and tells him that the car is extraordinary. But Murph responded casually, saying that it was just a car. Brooks finally arrived at the house of Reese's uncle, Jerry Lieberman, who greeted him very kindly. He was then invited into the house and introduced to Jerry's wife, Lillian, and Jerry's daughter, Reese's cousin, Celia, who was going to the dance with him. Jerry and Lillian didn't seem worried about letting their daughter go on a date with Brooks because they were impressed by his graceful appearance and demeanor. Celia says that Reese really doesn't want to accompany her to the dance, but Brooks says it would be more fun if she went with him than with Reese. Brooks and Celia finally arrive at Celia's school dance, where Brooks will pretend to be Celia's boyfriend. They then dance together and seem to enjoy the atmosphere before finally, Brooks was fascinated by a beautiful girl until he unknowingly injured Celia's leg. When he was compressing Celia's sprained leg, a beautiful girl who fascinated him came over to them. Brooks then invited her to get acquainted and found out that the girl was named Shelby Pace. Shelby is friendly to him and invites Celia and Brooks to attend a party held at her house. Celia didn't promise that she would come to the party, even though Brooks said otherwise. After that, Brooks took Celia home, and they had a bit of an argument about Shelby. Brooks then gets paid by Celia's father for being willing to accompany his daughter to the dance and bring her home safely. Unexpectedly, Brooks got a fairly large reward, which was just a small change for the wealthy Lieberman family. Brooks then returned the luxury car he borrowed and asked Reese about where he got enough money to buy the car, because, to Brooks' knowledge, he did not come from a wealthy family like Celia. But Reese warned Brooks not to meddle in his business and told him to ask fewer questions and work harder. Realizing that he has the potential to be the perfect date for anyone, Brooks then asked Murph to create an application where he could offer his services to women. He did this to raise money to study at Yale University, even without a scholarship. Murph then agreed to his friend's request and made the application. He even added a reminder feature to notify Brooks about his financial progress by offering dating services to make his dreams come true. The following day, Brooks received a message that he had been accepted at the University of Connecticut. However, he didn't seem excited because his dream was Yale. Brooks then began to find out about Shelby through her social media accounts. On the other hand, Brooks started taking orders for dating through Murph's app. His first date was accompanying a woman to a painting exhibition. After that, he had to become a tennis player competing in the mixed doubles group. He seems to enjoy his role as the perfect date for many women and makes them feel happy, even if only temporarily. Brooks' ability to change appearances, even doing previous research, so that his appearance is perfect and doesn't disappoint, is an important point that makes him get many orders for dating these women. Because of that, he is getting closer to achieving his dream of studying at Yale. Celia then calls Brooks and tells him that she likes a young man named Franklin and asks Brooks to accompany her to a party held at Shelby's house, where she intends to attract Franklin's attention by making him jealous. Because he would meet again with Shelby, Brooks immediately agreed to Celia's request. Arriving there, Celia panicked when confronted by Franklin, but Brooks managed to calm her down and help her so that she could have a private chat with Franklin. Brooks then went to Shelby and greeted her. Shelby asked if he wasn't jealous of seeing Celia alone with another man. Brooks said he didn't mind it because he and Celia trusted each other. After that, Celia tells Brooks that she is going out with Franklin and intends to announce their fake breakup in front of many people, including Franklin and Shelby. Brooks welcomes Celia's plan because he intends to have Shelby as a girlfriend when accepted into Yale. 
Celia then told Brooks that she might be able to help him get accepted at Yale because her father has a reasonably close relationship with the Chancellor of Yale University. Although Celia did not promise anything to Brooks, she promised to tell her father about Brooks' desire to enter Yale. Brooks seemed happy and thanked her for being willing to help him. Arriving at home, Brooks was questioned by his father for coming home too late at night. But Brooks just said that lately, he's been busy with school activities and sometimes has to attend his friends' parties. His father seemed to understand the reason. The next day, Brooks tells Murph about Shelby and the festive party he attended and that he is only a few steps away from making his dream come true. However, Murph doesn't seem to really respond to him and says that recently they rarely spent time together just to hang out or discuss the subject matter at school. Hearing this, Brooks took time out to hang out with Murph on the weekends. That night, when Brooks was on a date with a girl where he had to pretend to be a bad boy in front of her parents, he got a call from Celia saying that he was invited to attend an interview for the Yale University entrance exam. He was pleased to hear this. The next day, Celia picks up Brooks at his house and intends to take him to Yale. Upon arrival, Brooks was asked to appear in the dean's office, where the man then interviewed him about his desire to join Yale. Because Brooks had been preparing for a long time, the dean seemed impressed with Brooks' presentation and thought he was the perfect candidate to enter Yale. After that, Brooks was asked to submit the documents needed to enroll at Yale and they would notify him by mail if he was accepted at Yale or not. When he was about to go home, he revealed to Celia that he had done some research on Yale, which was part of his efforts to get accepted at Yale. He said that he got his inspiration from Reese, who worked hard to get the luxury car. Hearing this, Celia looked shocked and told Brooks that Reese got the luxury car because he found out that his father had an affair, so his father gave the luxury car so that Reese remained silent. Celia then told Brooks that she was always considered a tough girl by her parents. In fact, she is often afraid to show her true identity. Brooks, Celia, and Murph then have dinner together, where Murph then tells Celia about Brooks, who comes from a broken home family, so he has ambitions to become a successful person and change the world. Brooks' parents are divorced, and his mother remarried a wealthy man and has two children. She even sent Brooks a Christmas card, flaunted her happiness with her new family, and completely ignored Brooks' devastated feelings after his parents' divorce. Celia then drove Brooks home, and the two looked happy. Long story short, Celia finally dating Franklin. They engage in casual conversation about Celia and Brooks' relationship, which Celia regards as a modern relationship that has no rights to each other. Franklin seemed relieved to hear that because he was actually interested in her. However, Celia seemed a little fed up when Franklin talked about himself and his hobbies, although she didn't show it openly. After conversing further with him, she finally realized that he was not the right person for her. The next day, Brooks calls Celia and asks about her date with Franklin. She says the date went well and didn't tell him about herself feeling that Franklin wasn't the right person for her. Celia and Brooks then head to the dance, where they will carry out a dramatic the fake breakup plan in front of everyone. However, when they pretended to have a big fight in front of everyone, Celia was hurt by Brooks' words and slapped him. However, Brooks assumed it was just an act and didn't mind it. After finally breaking up with Celia, Brooks approached Shelby, where then she kissed Brooks and asked him to accompany her. The next day, Brooks gets an order for a date with an old woman, in which she simply asks him to accompany her for a walk in the park. However, he got invaluable advice on love and life from her. When Brooks comes to a fast food restaurant for work, he is shocked when he does not find Murph there and is replaced by a man named Toby, who tells him that Murph was disappointed in him, who he considered a person who only cares about himself. One night, Brooks and Shelby go to a dance where she reveals her plans for the future, to attend Harvard, work in her family's top company, and start her own business. Brooks immediately realized the social gap between them and then felt inferior. Although Celia then comes from a wealthy family, she never talks about her family's wealth or acts like a rich person like Shelby does. At the party, Brooks accidentally runs into Lee, a girl who has been using his app to practice dating, she then reveals to Shelby about Brooks' app and thanks to Brooks for helping her. Hearing this, Shelby seemed fed up with the Brooks app's theme of offering dating services to multiple women. Brooks finally revealed to Shelby that he didn't come from a wealthy family as she had always believed and said he made the application because he needed a lot of money to study at Yale. An angry and disappointed Shelby then called Brooks a liar and left him. 
Brooks then approached Celia, who was at the party, and asked her to dance with him. But she refused, saying that she was not a backup, and then left him. Brooks decides to go home and talk to his father about what has been going on in his life. His father reminds him that nobody truly knows who they are and admits to Brooks that he is proud of who his son is becoming. While going to bed, Brooks calls Murph, trying to apologize. But there was no response from him. Brooks then gets another order for a date, but he immediately cancels it. The next day at school, Reese tells Brooks that he can borrow his luxury car if he wants to go on a date with his girlfriend. But Brooks refused, saying that it was just a car. Brooks then wrote a letter and asked Celia to come to see him. The next day, Brooks and Celia finally meet. Brooks reveals to Celia that he has stopped dating apps and has decided to accept the offer to study at the University of Connecticut. If he has to pretend to be somebody else to go to Yale, he does not want to go. He has made up with Murph and gave a letter he had previously written to Celia, in which Brooks reflected on how his previous ambitions were to drive the most luxurious cars, go to the best schools, and date the prettiest girls. But he realized that ambition made him a bad friend, an ungrateful son, and a self-obsessed person. Brooks then wrote that the moments where he can be himself and what he is are when he is with Celia and always wants to be with her. That evening, Celia visits Brooks at home and apologizes for slapping him. The two then head to a beautifully decorated sub-sandwich restaurant for the party, where Murph reveals that he had the idea to decorate the venue. He then said that he would study at the University of Connecticut. Brooks eventually makes up with Celia, sharing a kiss and dancing together until the film's end. The moral that can be learned from this movie is to be yourself to get your true love, because only people who really love us can accept all our shortcomings and strengths. We are taught not to be afraid to dream of achieving everything we want. Whatever your background, don't be scared to dream. Instead, dream as high as you can, as long as you balance it by studying, working hard, and praying that your dreams will come true soon.